It's extremely hard to cancel subscriptions. Let me tell you a little story. A harrowing tale of me and the Planet Fitness on 162nd and Broadway in New York City, specifically in Washington Heights. They were charging me $10 a month for an embarrassingly long time. I'm not going to say all of COVID, but all of COVID. Um, And I would have never known about it if I didn't have Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and that's why I love Rocket Money. It saved my life. What I like is it shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you. So not only do you find out what you don't want, you can hit like two buttons and it drafts a letter saying, here's my name, here's my account number, please cancel it for me, and it's all taken care of. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash bald. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash bald. Is this thing on? Check one, two, one, two. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Kiki Palmer. This year is almost ending, but baby, I'm just getting started. That's why fresh out the oven, I'm proud to introduce to you my new podcast, Baby, this is Kiki Palmer, exclusively on Amazon Music. I'm putting my friends, family, and some of the hottest experts in the hot seat to ask them the questions that have been burning on my mind. What will former child stars be if they weren't actors? What happened to sitcoms? Is OnlyFans only bad? I want to know, so I asked my mama about it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? These are the questions that keep me up at night, and I'm letting y'all all in on it. Because, baby, this is Kiki Palmer, and no topic is off limits. Come kick it with me and my weekly guests as we go down the rabbit hole and dive deep into my mind together. Listen to Baby This Is Kiki Palmer exclusively on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app now. From my mic to your ears. I'll talk to you soon, loves. You know it's your girl. Okay, welcome back to another episode of The Bald and the Beautiful. Today, I am bald. She is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we have an extra special guest, Natasha Legera. Now, we never have guests anymore, but Trixie passed. I gathered passed. that. Yeah, she passed away uh, two days ago, so, um, you know. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's weird. Well, that's <laughs> your producer's laughing. Oh, and yeah, yeah. giving me the cue. Oh, sorry, yeah. The, uh, stop doing the laugh track. Thank you, thank you. Hey, uh, as a comedian, sometimes you do laugh when your dearest pass. So I wasn't sure, but I'm very, very happy that this is a joke. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say I'm very happy for your <laughs> loss. <laughs> no, but thank you so much for being here. Um, first of all, I have to say, I had never seen another period until very recently, i.e. yesterday. <laughs> and, it, and, and it is so fucking funny, like laugh out loud funny, like obnoxiously funny. I was watching it while... My new um, gay lover, uh, we're like kind of doing sexy stuff on the couch, but. And you had another period on? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and I have to tell you, like, I really like him and he, we're very attracted to each other, but the attention was like Amazing. squarely on the television. Yeah, it was, it was so funny. It's like, it's, I don't, I don't think that like, I don't think that comedy is all that funny all the time, to, to be honest, but like. It is. We tried to really go for it. Yeah, you really, I mean, it's so, so good. And also it's worth noting that Shonda Rhimes came out and told us in the press that that was her favorite show and her dream was to make something like another period. And then she did Bridgerton. But Bridgerton's not a comedy. But, you know, she just has that golden touch. So what can you do? That makes a lot of sense, actually. But I mean, the the whole like, um, the concept of, uh, you know, a turn of the century. Um, it's like a gilded, Abbey, a gilded Age as a reality show is so fucking funny. Thank so you. Good. Did you love doing it? I loved it. It was such a dream. And, you know, you never realize something's a dream when you're doing it. Yeah, it always seems we like are- a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're like, when will this end? <laughs> and then you get five more jobs and you're like, oh my God, yeah. that was so much better than anything <laughs> else. Because, you know, we were working with all our friends and yeah, the seemed- network. Comedy Central. I mean, the good thing was they didn't give us notes. I was going to say that I was like, this doesn't seem possible anymore. Like, how how are you able to get away with so much blue material? I mean, it's really, really crazy, especially that bit where you're the Irish um, uh, when there's the pageant um, and there's I think it's your talent that. uh, the Irish song that about the mix. I don't remember. Oh, right. Because well, we were thinking like people used to be racist of towards course. the Italians yes. and Irish yeah, people. Yeah. Um, it is brutally funny. I'm sure there's a lot of un PC things in well, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so, it's so, 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 so good. I so think good. our our manservant got raped by like a Ravished. woman. Ravished. <laughs> was it? was so. It was. <laughs> it was so. It was so funny. I mean, it's like, uh, and nobody, nobody could ever believe that he'd been ravished because he was so 
ugly. You know, it is just so funny. It's so, so, well, so Well, thank so you. Funny. I'm glad you were able to uh, get through the nine paywalls to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not that easy to no. access. No. And, you know, that's really the hardest thing about producing TV shows is like if it's on Netflix, everybody sees it. Right. And So how do you get something seen today? You just have to put out a million things until you get on a streaming platform. Because Comedy <sighs> Central, it's like, I... I don't know what cable provider I have. I have no idea. And I, it's 9,000 when I they know. ask you. I So I go to this, like the, the general, I go to like, I go all the way back on my TV and I look for the search thing and then I search for it. And then it tells me like, oh, these are the only fans companies that have the, the <laughs> thing. And then I, but then you have to pay $10 to watch it, but whatever. I don't even care. Well, yeah, it's, it's very frustrating. My husband's in charge of the tech support. And okay. that is one of the main reasons I got married, I feel like, because okay. he just like helps with all of that. But then he gets annoyed and won't help me, and I, I kind of give up. Do you how, how long have you been working with him professionally? Well, we have a podcast together, yes. uh, the Endless Honeymoon podcast. And, um, you know, I guess that's pretty – oh, and we've – I guess we're always kind of working together. We did the special. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I, was gonna, I was wondering, I was like, that seems challenging. You must really, really like him. <laughs> I, that's an interesting way to look at it. Um <laughs> It's just, it feels so inevitable. Really? I guess. Well, because then you're also like, there's so many things I want to ask him to do just about like the house. Sure. And like pick up this and yeah. can you close the cabinets? Right. And, I mean, the other day he like, and then living with a guy, like it's so challenging. Like we have three elderly chihuahuas that pee on everything. Oh, wow. And he leaves out for a pee pad the other day. He's done this twice now. My new monogram towels on the floor. And I come home and, and he's got it really neatly put out. So it's like, you know, so it's not an accident. Something. Oh, right, right. You know, it's not like he just threw it on the floor. Right. He's like, this is where they can pee. So it's like a lot of challenges like that. Do you feel like it's a vengeful placement? That's what or I like, thought. Because yeah. he also started techno DJing and I do not like techno at all. Because wait, are you a DJ? No, she Trixie's was. A DJ. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she was. You know, rest in peace. I, I feel like, oh my God, this is horrible. So he started doing like 90s techno from like his office and it's really loud. And I said to him the other day, I was like, are you trying to fuck with me? Yeah. And he and then he brought it up in couples therapy. He's like, I can't believe she thought I was like fucking with her. And I'm like, well, I just don't understand why someone would think like at 11 a.m. This was acceptable in a shared office space. Yeah. How old is he? <laughs> 43. Yeah. At 43, I'm going to take up this really <laughs> annoying hobby in, in, in the home. And it, yeah. He is like always coming up with new hobbies. I feel like. <laughs> It's because like women, a woman as a mother, it's like there's no time. No. My hobby is like laundry, but right, like he's right. got surfing, he's into RVs and camping, DJing. Wow. It's like he's he's got all these like. Sounds like a hobo. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. I, it's funny. Like I um I don't. So wait, you've been married to him for. We've been married for seven years. Seven. Um, I'm trying to work less with him, okay. but we do have this podcast, which yeah. is really fun when we give yeah. advice. And I he, love, I love the podcast. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and he's, you know, he's was an AA for many years. He's yeah. got good advice. Oh, that's right. You know what? That's great. Someone married to somebody who's sober. That's, oh, it's either great it. or, you know. No, and he totally is not judgmental. Yeah. And he's always telling me like, he's like, you're not an alcoholic. You don't <laughs> smoke too much weed. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> And I'm like, I do smoke all the time. (laughs) He's like, yeah, but you don't have a problem. Because like in AA, it's like people, you know, he knows people who woke up in Jerusalem with like (laughs) a high heel in their eyeball. Like, (laughs) so he thinks I'm like totally fine. So, and he's always driving and, you know, he takes care. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, So you can get lit, crunk and turned (laughs) and then you always have a chauffeur. That's really smart. I mean, it is a nice perk. Yeah. I don't know how lit I get, but you know, Mm. I hate driving. I hate driving too. And I, I recently started driving again after maybe 10 years of not driving. And it is so terrifying. It really is. Why? This is, seriously, why aren't people more afraid of it? Well, I am as a child, like having a child too. Like I don't want anyone driving her anywhere. I'm like always trying to walk places. And then I had a nanny who flipped her car and I'm just like. How did she? she like really she just strong. on the freeway. Like, oh, I thought it you just like she flipped, flipped it over. Like. <laughs> She fl- is she's dead now or is she still no, alive? She survived. But how did she survive that? I don't know. <laughs> Super nanny. <laughs> Damn. My kid was not in the car. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but then right. I never let her drive the kid anywhere. Yes, driving is terrifying. I saw well, I saw so there's as you notice, there's no sidewalks on the street. That's that's terrifying to me. I know. And I saw um a young dad with a child on a bike 
a bike on the street? street? Yes, on this hill street with no sidewalks. You know, they have like a baby or um, a child seat on the yeah, back yeah. of the bike. I was like, you're going to hell because that child is going <laughs> to die. Don't you? I mean, it's so wild. I know. It's so terrifying. And I, I, every time I get in the car, I'm like, okay, this could be it. <laughs> but that's not it. No, seriously. Because it know. really we, could. We have to get over our fears, though. No, 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 no. I think we just need to transfer the irrational ones to the rational ones. Like How fear of flying. Work? That's that's an irrational fear. Fear of getting in an airplane. Yeah, because you're not flying the plane. Right. So what's what are you afraid of? But driving, we should actually be afraid of. Oh, and everyone's texting. And even if you're not texting, they are. They are. Yeah. So it's like you're um, it's like we're in Mad Max and everybody's drunk and like on, it's it's really really terrifying. I was um like my first uh, day of driving after I got my car, I would pull up to a red light on Sunset and I looked over and there was a Jeep with no doors. And a kid who was probably 17, um, smoking a joint and talk on, a, on the phone. And I, and I was like, and it looked like a Hummer though. It was a giant uh, like Jeep looking thing. And I was like, he could crush my car and I could, this could be it. So Yeah, my husband has a Tesla, which I'm driving today. I hate it. It's, it's so awful. It's, it's like, like a computer. You're like driving in the middle of the computer and then he drives it on autopilot. And he's just constantly texting. But we've gotten pulled over. It's not legal to do this. Even though Elon Musk has made this feature like – a part of the car. Yeah. But and if, the officer was like, no, you can't do that. And then he just still keeps doing it. And also, I I don't know if this is true and I shouldn't like conspiracy theorize, but I believe that they, the CIA can hack into your car and then just like drive you into a tree. I'm sure you're right. I think they can. Ugh, it's awful. Yeah. What do we do? I don't know. I feel like we should just live it up for the next two years and then it's going to be over. <laughs> You know, funny, I've had that feeling for the last 15 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, well, then maybe I'm wrong. You know. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but it's you... just an it's just an instinct. Okay. <laughs> so I have to like I um so I'm watching your stand up and your like, you know, and your the style of comedy you do and your point of view. Um I um I can imagine I would guess that having a child may ch- have changed your worldview a little bit. Yes, it sucks. And because it's like <laughs> I just keep talking about the child and then I'll say something she says to a friend in front of her. She's uh-huh. four now, almost okay. five. And she's like, mommy, don't tell people what I say. Is she That's- British? She does have a British <laughs> accent. Well, I kind of have like, I've always wanted to be a royal. So like, you know, I'm just always trying to like encourage. Does she that- talk like that at home? Well, because her palate's <laughs> her palate's really developed. She's always like screaming for caviar. <laughs> caviar, caviar, mommy. <laughs> Do they have caviar here? I'm like, honey, keep your voice down. We're to Black Lives Matter rally. Like, <laughs> stop it. She's like so stuck up. But like, I had beef oh running until I was 39. Sure. So, you yeah. know, I'm like totally down for her. So, anyway, oh um, but oh, but she's been telling me to stop saying things. And then I'm like, oh my God, if she's like, if I do a Netflix special and like talking about her and then she sees it when she's like 12. Oh. What if she hates me? Oh, what if? She, she will, will, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I just have to be able to like tour right now. Yeah. So no one will record it. I'll make fun of her, do the tour, and then give it up. I think maybe because I've run across this like, you know, um, I've gone, I've gotten into hot water. I'm talking about people from my personal life mm-hmm. on stage or whatever or, or on the podcast. Me too. And um, so that is definitely going to happen. It's going to be tough because I saw a massage therapist in Australia and it was a one you know it was one where the the jerk off one yeah and um and I raved about the experience later um but I had called him a hooker um <laughs> and but no one knew who it was I did, it was to- nobody I didn't all say all they know is this country <laughs> the, the country I didn't even say the city I don't think and like I didn't describe him right. I just I gave a rave glowing review but because I was also once a hooker back in the day I used the term kind of flippantly and mm-hmm. I contacted him again to see if he had any um, <gasps> like a, rec- a recommendation Ooh. for another city and he's like I was like he's like um why are you gonna talk about it on your podcast and he said he didn't know who I was anyway so I was like you know what I just have to be very careful about who I talk about. And if you talk about your daughter on stage, it's a wrap. She's going to kill you. (laughs) Don't you think? I I mean, mean, I love her so much. And if she started like hating me because I was like, you know, talking about making fun of her, you know, the things she eats or the things she says. And I don't know. Half of it's, you know, embellished. So I I mean, don't kids like sue their parents for putting them on Instagram? Well, I mean, I think that. I mean, most kids hate their parents at some point anyways. I like, know. If, Julia Roberts. Her kids hate her? I don't think they hate her, but I think they're probably like, they're not impressed. Well, they probably never see her. 
That's true. She's probably like, I'm in Tuscany. I'm right. in, it's like so hard to keep up with it all. And, you know, if you want to still be involved, like every time I see an actress on a billboard with kids, I'm like, do they ever see their kid? Oh, it's probably just a, like an army of nannies. I saw Nicole Kidman once at the theater with her two kids, but she only stayed for one act. Wow. You know, like of the Broadway play, you oh. know, so I, I bet everyone's just so busy that, that it's is, like, yeah, that's you can depressing. show up. Yeah. You just, you, you show your face you're there, <laughs> and then you just go in the bathroom, do cocaine and then leave. Oh, <laughs> <it's> so horrible. <laughs> This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash bald and get on your way to being your best self. Listen, I don't like going to Westwood. I don't like going to Malibu. I don't really like going anywhere. You know what I like? Staying put. But I also like getting help. That's where BetterHelp comes in. Online therapy. You can access it from your computer. Whether you're in a hovel or in a palace or something in between, it's convenient. It works. It's wonderful. They've got therapists that are trained to help you figure out the causes of your challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills. And BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. So convenient, so secure, and accessible absolutely anywhere. Online therapy, what a boon, because like I said, sometimes you're too depressed to leave the house. What are you going to do? That's right. Fire up that old iMac and get on the horn with the therapist. I've learned many things, such as coping skills, such as self-empowerment, exercises such as learning how to juggle all thanks to therapy online as the world's largest therapy service BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100 percent online plus it's affordable just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist if things aren't clicking you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime it couldn't be simpler no waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash bald. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. Wow. No matter how much I try to prepare for the holiday season, the chaos always comes. Isn't that right, folks? But with stamps.com, a little bit of the chaos becomes comfortable, wonderful, not chaos. They're a one-stop shop for all my shipping and mailing needs. And for more than 20 years, They've been there, indispensable for me and over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com is a stress-free solution for every small business. You can use them to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer. And if you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it right through your Stamps.com dashboard. You know what I love about Stamps.com? As much as I love the post office, I really enjoy my free time and I don't want to spend it all there. They really save me hours and hours and hours to do whatever I wish at home alone. They're wonderful. Now, this holiday season, trade late nights for silent nights and get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code BALD for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code BALD. Get a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale at Stamps.com slash BALD. Thanks to Stamps.com for sponsoring the show. <laughs> Wait, do you roll with like, I imagine you, you're probably, you know, you're deep in the comedy scene, but do you have like, um, do you travel in the, the like celebrity circles of Hollywood? No, I'm no. sorry. Wait, in what way? Like Julia Roberts? No, yeah, I don't hang out with Julia you Roberts. You don't do uh, Mahjong with her on Tuesday nights? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's been, you know, this is actually my books about like being like at the height of your, like in your prime, you know, and then having a kid and hoping they can kind of like, figure out how to be a part of your life instead of you being a part of like a kid life. And it's oh. such a struggle because you want to be this glamorous person who just has a kid. Right. But then it's like, there's all this pull to, it's very degrading having a child. Yeah. You know, you're constantly being degraded. Well, it's disgusting. She started doing this thing of like, like grabbing like my neck, like underneath my neck when we're in public, like talking to me. And I'm like, do not ever touch oh my, my face. Not like, that part either. It's I like, know. It's like, oh my and God. I'm like talking to my friends and she's like <laughs> pinching under my neck yesterday. And I was like, I told you to never touch me. Though. Like, stop it. You know, it's just like all of the, and then they're pulling at you and you've got stains on your shirt and you're like, did you, you know, did you get your drinks and your medicine and you're like food every seven minutes. It's yeah. just like, it's a constant, <sighs> it's really challenging. Is, humiliated. is she potty trained? Of course. She's five. <laughs> no, well, I'm I like, know, you, I have no idea. Eight, like, the... Every year is a surprise. Like I was never around kids. I never wanted kids. Yeah. 
I was like, my therapist called it a situational breeder. So like if the situation presented itself to me in the right way, I would say yes. And it did? It did. Well, I had frozen my eggs by 38 yeah. just in case okay. the situation came they around. La- how long did they last for? They can last, I think, for like at least 10 years or wow. 15 years. And your uterus is good till you're like 60. Oh, yeah. But um, you got to do it before 37. But okay. anyway, I did not want. But then when I met Moshe, I was like, oh, okay, he can, uh, he can fertilize one of them. Oh, he's definitely fertile. That head of hair. It's, <laughs> it's so thick and full. It's gorgeous. <laughs> he's it's go- very into his hair. Is it? Of course he is. I mean, men with hair are into their hair. And men without hair don't care about hair. Yeah, I don't really care about hair. I, I wish he had less of it. It's yeah. always everywhere. Well, is it like um, some? I have this friend Andrew who has this like long. I mean, it's like you know, Tresemme commercial kind of hair, and it's like there's Andrew and then there's his hair. So you're having a conversation with two people when you talk to him. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like another entity in the room. I hate that. Yeah, some people are like, "Oh, it's so great to see you in your hair today." You know, <laughs> it's, like, it's too it's wild. Um, so I have a nephew who's four. Oh, so you kind of understand the age. Um, I understand the age from like, but we don't, he, you know, he's in Washington, so we don't see oh, much of him, but he really looks know. exactly like me Aww. and it's creepy. I mean, it's nice, but it's, um, genetics is wild. Yeah. I mean, he looks exactly like me. Interesting. So I just hope he's not, you know. Why? I mean, that'd be nice. No, gay people, oh, it's horrible being gay. Well, I guess the nice thing is that now, hopefully, when you, when you, you tell your parents, you're, you're less afraid to tell your parents that you're gay. And now, yeah. there's more support. Of because course, of course. I feel like so many gay people I know never had support. So, But because of that, I think they um, oftentimes now, I mean, you know, off, you know, it's different in different parts of the country. But these days, yeah, it's not a, for a lot of kids. It's not even an issue, but that makes them less interesting. So now we have boring gay people. Right. You know what I mean? What do you think of, of wanting your daughter, like hoping that she's a lesbian just so she doesn't have to be around like straight men all the time? I think that is a really natural hope. <laughs> but, I mean, well, think about it, men, like, ugh. Just the less men, the better, right? Yeah. I mean, if you, you don't have to worry about her getting pregnant. Mm. You don't have to worry about her getting RAPED probably, you know, I mean, not mm. to say that some, you know, but it's less frequent, I'm assuming. Yeah. And it's, it's just so wonderful hard. to have someone around the house who knows how to like hang pictures and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a tool belt. Do you under do you do you like have someone help you with everything? I got this guy off of TaskRabbit. Ah, he's so hot, and he has braces. <laughs> hey, you better be careful. You might listen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I got this nice man. Well, I didn't just this hot hooker with, off yeah, of yeah, TaskRabbit. Yeah, yeah, this fucking whore with braces. Yeah. Oh, but he's so fabulous, and I have to. And I'm. I have pretty. You know, I'm not. I think creepy thoughts, but I don't do creepy things. And okay. I, but Lord Jesus Christ, I would. Oh, it's just, yeah, he's wonderful. And, and he's he really good at everything. You. See, I just feel like I wish I had a little more agency because yeah. I want everything to look exactly of how course. I want, but I don't want to like sit in my house with someone for six hours and oh, no, 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 be no, no, like no. a total diva about like, I'm sorry, can we redo that like one inch to the right? I had wallpaper put up and the guy said he was the guru. He was nothing of the sort. And it took him about six and a half hours. And he, <laughs> he'd put it, up. it was wrong. Like it, it did not <gasps> stay up, but I said, it's perfect. And I just let him go and I, I ripped it up. You wall. did? Yeah, but I mean, what was I going to do? I, I I just don't have the it's like. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> and I think I tipped him like 100% too. And I just like, get out of here. And then, oh yeah. Oh my was, God. I don't know. I have no spine. Well, that makes me feel better that you that you have someone helping you. So. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know how to do anything. I don't know how to cook. Um, I'm learning how to do like unload and load the dishwasher. Um, but I don't know how to figure out the oven thing yet. I'm 40. Really? Well, that's still young. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I don't like cooking and I have a friend who's like, I think you should examine that in therapy. <laughs> she was like, that's not normal. Like, that's like a, that's a thing like to, that creates home. And well, I just, I mean, there's so much, I mean, cooking is so, it can be so laborious. Like yeah, there the are cooks, measuring and there are the, cooks who just cook. Yeah, that's their job. Exactly. You know, if you were like mega ultra, super billionaire wealthy, would you have a private chef? Exactly. Of yeah. course. Yeah. And also, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, I, I can't, I can't do it. If something has like, I like two or three ingredients, a like plain. that would be like a nice cookbook. Oh, two or three ingredients. Rachel Ray, hot dog nachos, <laughs> <laughs> 30 minute meals. It's, that, di- it's hot re- dog. I mean, I can't, I don't think I could eat that. No, I couldn't eat that either. It's, it's really disgusting. <laughs> but um, you have a, <laughs> you have, um, um, I don't, I hate it when people like just parrot back their things to, to the, um, person, but I have to 
the joke that you did, um, I th- it was in one of your earlier stand-up specials, I think, where you were talking about being at the DMV and um, oh my God. you have AIDS. Wait, that's like a cancelable joke now. Oh, no, so it's it, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> No, no, it's, no, no, it's fine. But sometimes people will send me things and I'm like, can you not send these around anymore? Like, right, it's right. just very stressful because I think it's easy to forget that the whole mode of comedy has changed and evolved yes. for yeah. the better. Yeah. And I think that 15 years ago, people were like, how can I shock everyone? Sure. And I feel like there was like a lack of empathy or something in the comedy world, maybe. How do you think it is now? Because I mean, I um, male comics, I have to say, I struggle to to I struggle to like them. I've Straight never really comics, liked anyways. male comics, and I just find women more interesting to look at. They're more beautiful. Yes. They have a more interesting point of view. Yes. Even my daughter, we were playing music yesterday, and she's like, "Can you put on some more female voices? I want to hear women sing." <laughs> That's so great. And I was like, "Yes, women are better singers." But like, you're probably not supposed to say that, but. At the same time, she's just like, like we were listening to Beyonce Mm. and because I'm trying to play her like every genre of music. And so she was very, she's like, (laughs) say my name. We were listening to, uh, you know, Destiny's Child. And then when someone comes, maybe it's Jay-Z, they start rapping. She's like, that, that's their father, right? Like she, <laughs> when the man comes on, it's, it's like, dad they're piping d- in. <laughs> go to your room, girl. Yeah. So that then I was, so, so she loves Say My oh. Name. And so she always wants to do that. So then I started playing her Beyonce. And then like all of a sudden, like a, a man will start rapping. Jay-Z comes on. She's like, can we listen to something or just her singing? Like, I don't want to hear them. Oh. So I do like that. She is going to be fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel the exact same way about music. I listen to exclusively female vocalists. Yeah. I find the sound of a man's voice grating. What are the, who are the men right now who are like a single male who you would listen to in the way that you listen to like Billie Eilish or? Uh, maybe The Weeknd because he sounds like a girl. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think the music is up to my par for no, listening. No, I don't, I don't like it, but I'm just, I actually, the like only. Like Billie Eilish I think is cute and cool and yeah. I like some of her stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, are there like male singer songwriters? I mean. Uh, Charlie Puth, but it's very poppy. I don't know him. He's like a young kid. He's so, so cute. Puth? Puth, P-U-T-H. Is he British? No, he's American. And he's like this adorable, um, like hot nerd, but he kind of gay baits on his uh, social media. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? He knows Like he's that straight, but he's, he's straight, but he knows that the gays are like foaming at the mouth for him. So they're like, <laughs> he'll post like a two second video of like his nipples or something. You know what I mean? Things like that. Oh, good but, for him. Yeah, I guess. exactly. Um, I don't know. I just hate, I, I usually listen to foreign music because I don't like, the, the stupidity of uh, bad lyrics to mm. like, interrupt my musical enjoyment. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, we were listening to um, Joni Mitchell, and then she we walked into a cafe, and they were doing the Paved Paradise mm-hmm. to Big Yellow Taxi song, but it was some dude singing it. Oh. It wasn't the Green Day version, but it was like another young guy, and she was like, oh, I, I like the other version better. And she just kind of can hear it. So, But I she think knows. I'm like pumping music into her all the time. Yeah. So hopefully she'll be cool, I guess. At five, that's like a really good sign. Okay, good. Do you believe in astrology? Well, I do, but my husband does not believe in ghosts, astrology, angels, the supernatural, like anything that he can't like touch with his claws. He's like, (laughs) that's not a real thing. Good man. So, I mean, I guess I, I think that some people have intuition and I think to say that they don't is a little ignorant. Okay. Um, in terms of, you know, being able to access uh, anything in the spiritual realm. Okay. In terms of astrology, I don't really know or understand. I am. I'm. Sh- I'm from Boston, and I've lived here for about seven years, and it's. Oh, because h- how much people in LA love astrology? I thought it was a joke, but <laughs> it is like. It is crazy. Well, I saw this clip of Lizzo it's the other day crazy. talking about like someone like miss. Miss uh, astrology to her as an Aries, and she was like truly upset about it. And I thought she was kidding, but then I watched it again, and I was like, no, I think she's serious. Like, the, wow. you know, but because I'm an Aries, so okay. I was like, oh, she really does not like Aries. And then I was like, what's wrong with Aries? Um, See, it's it's kind of it is it, a thing. It's a little crazy, right? <laughs> well, when's your when's your birthday? March twenty sixth. March twenty sixth. Okay. So that's an Aries. I don't even know what my husband is because he like rejects it so much. I think he might be a Cancer, but we've never. He doesn't know what he is. Like, if you were like, "What astrology sign are you?" Oh, sure. He Does he know not. his birthday though? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what day his was he? His birthday's with? July sixth. That's 
So it cancer. is a cancer. Okay. okay. So water and fire. That's the only thing I go by. Oh, no. Wait, he's water and he, I'm fire? Yes. Is that bad? Uh, no. I mean, water puts out fire and you need, um, right? That sounds really sexy in the bedroom. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> water puts it out like, the fire. The passionate <laughs> flame is doused in like the cooling um, water of... Um, I don't know. But doesn't it have to do with like something scientific? I don't think it has anything scientifically um, because the stars, the, planets, the placement of the planets, the placement isn't that of the, science? I think that's a, astronomy, right? Or like I, I have a friend who's like a, a, a professional witch and she was in Salem for many years, like wow. reading cards and stuff. She knows all the mythology of it. A white witch? And it's, um, oh, she's black, but like, um, no, but I, like, I'm just good. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, um, she's a good witch. Okay, good. She's definitely a good witch. Um, and she's very, very smart. And it's kind of like um, she treats it. I would say she treats it kind of like mythology. So there's all those stories and stuff that have lessons and yada, yada, yada. Okay, I like that. But, you know, Zeus wasn't real, right? But like there's all these lessons to be like gleaned from these, you know, mythological stories, I guess. Like le- like almost like um, uh, aphorisms or they're like uh, things that you – read to help you to help guide you yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah yeah because i mean i feel like i know somebody who thought they were like a gemini for half their life and then they <laughs> found out they were a scorpio and i was like so and then their whole worldview changed okay i will like, tell you one thing okay my daughter and i would say my six best friends throughout my life have all been pisces uh-huh. and someone said that or you know, I don't know if this, this is like very obvious, but they always say this, that you learn the most from the ast- astrological signs right next to you. So okay. I've always like taken that to heart that like okay. every one of my friends has a birthday in February. Um, do you think that's just, uh, co- my husband would say it's a coincidence and I'm an idiot. No, I would think that that's absolutely like the, and my daughter, the heavy fate of the heavy hand of fate working in your life. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, I think if, I think in 200 years, it would be very possible for us to look back at astrology and be like, wow, they were really stupid or crazy or something. You know what I mean? Or like, or it's all like proven to be exactly true. And I guess we'll never know. Yeah. I just don't know. I just don't understand how like the, the day you were born could indicate your whole personality. Well, it has brought me a lot of solace that I was born on the same day as both Tennessee Williams and Diana Ross. So that's much more <laughs> important than astrology. Because you're like, oh, these are the parts of me. These are these are my kindred spirits yeah. who really get it. Yeah, those are your soul sisters. But there's so many famous people and so many amazing famous people that there's no way that you don't have like, like my husband, I think, was born on the same day as David Bowie and Hitler or something. So it's like, what can you do? <laughs> Perfect man. <laughs> I mean, I was born literally like minutes after Kirsten Dunst, whom I don't know but love. And <laughs> minutes I, after. I mean, and I feel like I feel like she looks like my sister. I feel like we're related, and I um I hope to meet her one day because I feel like I feel like there's something there. Okay, now what about ghosts? If someone's like, I saw a ghost in my house. I believe that people see what they see. Because okay. I have seen ghosts. You have? Yes. However. In your it, house? Um, In my house, outside of the house. You've seen them, not I've felt it. I've seen them with my eyes. However, it is oh. very important to note that I was um. under, under the influence <laughs> of psychoactive drugs. Well, that doesn't count. What doesn't count? The drugs or the ghosts? Well, I mean, I just did ayahuasca and saw a lady motioning to come towards me. But it yeah. was because it was, you know, psych... It was... A, vis- a vision uh-huh. from the drug, no? You wouldn't call a ghost a vision? And and I suppose you would. Maybe an appar- apparition. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, do you, I, so I was, but it was like a very ghostly. And I was not hallucinating anything else at the time. Okay. So it was so interesting. So you entered a different realm. Because that's what I noticed when I did the ayahuasca. It's like, okay, reality is not exactly what we think it right. is. And oh, that's for sure. It, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to think that reality is just this yeah. is like... Depressing. Yeah, there's other realms, right? So I have. When did you do ayahuasca? Recently. Really? Tell me everything because I'm very into this. It was really cool. Did you puke? I did. Yeah. And the thing I wasn't prepared for is we were very packed in, and then like you know you're sober, you're looking around. It's like this tight circle. You have two little like open like glass vases on one side of you, and then two on the other side. So the one on to your right are is your vomit bucket. Yeah. 
and your Kleenex bucket. Yep. And then the one to your left is the other person's vomit bucket and Kleenex right. bucket. So you're kind of sandwiched in between their vomit. And then the other thing I wasn't really prepared for, because, you know, I throw up very neatly. I'm just like, you know, but all of a <laughs> sudden screech. you're having this vision, there's music and you just hear a man across the thing like, because like you're hurling and men are just louder. <laughs> Yeah. It was just like, that was a lot. Because you're yeah. already like, okay, can I handle this? Like, I'm peaking. And then that happened. But it's so it's not a perfect drug pretty much because of that. That's, right. That is the glitch in the drug. It's extremely hard to cancel subscriptions. Let me tell you a little story. A harrowing tale of me and the Planet Fitness on 162nd and Broadway in New York City, specifically in Washington Heights. They were charging me $10 a month for an embarrassingly long time. I'm not going to say all of COVID, but all of COVID. Um, And I would have never known about it if I didn't have Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and that's why I love Rocket Money. It saved my life. Are you wasting money on subscriptions? You know, maybe it's the Amazon Prime account, or maybe it's a Hulu account, or maybe it's, you know, it could be anything. This is a great app that I use. It helps me keep track of all my expenses. And because of it, I no longer waste money on subscriptions I don't even use. You might have heard of it. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. What I like is it shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you. So not only do you find out what you don't want, you can hit like two buttons and it drafts a letter saying, here's my name, here's my account number, please cancel it for me. And it's all taken care of. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash bald. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash bald. Shop through Rakuten for everyone this holiday season. Earn cash back for everything on your gift list, like clothing, shoes for the fashionista, toys and games for the little ones, electronics for the tech connoisseur, kitchen and home essentials for the ultimate host or hostess in your life, or just something for yourself. You are already shopping, so why not get some cash back? Rakuten is the smartest and most rewarding way to shop and save. You can earn cash back at over 3,500 stores. Membership is free and it's easy to sign up. Rakuten deposits your cash back directly into your PayPal account or they can send you a check. It's a no-brainer. You can earn cash back from what you already are shopping for. Start all of your shopping at Rakuten. Your cash back adds up. Rakuten has 15 million members who are already saving. Get the free Rakuten app and download the free browser extension. Rakuten also finds you the best deals, sales, and coupons. They do the work of searching for codes so you can save time and money. Rakuten pays you to shop. It's not too good to be true. Something I love about it is that I love holiday shopping, and I'm not going to lie, if I'm going to get something for someone, I want to know the best possible price. And I can tell you personally from a holiday shopper that the deeper you look, the more you're like, wow, there's always a different version of that final price somewhere else. It's a no-brainer. You're already going to be shopping for your loved ones. You might as well do it right and save a little money. Visit Rakuten.com or download the app to earn cash back when you shop at thousands of stores. You can start saving today. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I did it with about 150 people. Ugh. And this exactly what you described, sandwiched. But mm. we were also all wearing diapers. Why? Because they said you shit? <laughs> they said you might shit. What? So they, uh, yes. I, so I was fully diapered up. I was not taking any chances. I, I did of, not hear of anyone shitting. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, it, enough people were had, I mean, maybe like, it's very rare, I guess, because I don't think anybody shat that day or that night. I'm not sure. But um, uh, I was just so scared. And I was like, I'm in the middle of this. And I'm in a parking lot in Mexico. And I don't want to shit myself. So I put the diaper on. And it, was kind of, it was kind of fun, though, because it was freezing. Oh, so. my God. Yeah. Did you like, I mean, you, the symphony of retching. Like, that, well, that was rough, but that wasn't as prevalent. It Everyone did it at first, it seemed like. Cause there was only there was like 35 people. Okay. Then I was sitting next to this woman who... I, you know, she had a headdress on and she was from like some indigenous culture. And I was like, you know, which one uh, can I move your your vomit bucket a little closer to you? And she was like, oh, honey, I haven't vomited in 45 years. Because <laughs> like I was just very like freaking out about the vomit, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm not going to need Kleenex. Meanwhile, like my yeah. Kleenex bucket was like yeah. totally full from Oof. not just crying, but like wiping your mouth yeah. and thinking you're going to retch yeah. and like blowing your nose. Um, it's pretty uh, unglamorous. It's, it's pretty very humbling. unglamorous. You have these like masks on, but um, well, you had a mask on. Yeah, well, they they wanted oh, us like to wear mask. like an eye oh, mask yeah, sure. because I think it's a very 
sedentary, but everyone's experiences were so different. Like, and talk about entering another realm. One woman, like, because we all had to say our experiences at the end. And we did it six times. So you do it three times that night. Wait, what? Well, it's, a, it's an, and you, it's, you spend the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you did three times. The, you got there at five. You did it at like 6 p.m., 8 p.m., oh, and the, then probably the, like 1 a.m. Sure, or something. Sure. Yeah, that, we did that too. We fell asleep. And then the next morning, we oh, did it three that's... more times and then left that day. Right. So it was kind of like that's... you could really fit it into your schedule. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to like go to Mexico and get diapers, or whatever you did. Well, they did it. They um, shitting in some parking lot. <laughs> we had. I mean, we're literally in this like, um, <laughs> like uh, broke ass like hoopsie van, um, trying to like Ooh, go up a hill, like a rocky hill. It we was, get to this yes. abandoned restaurant. It was very, very Whoa. rustic. Did you, was it a good experience? Were you glad you did it? I never, I didn't, me and two other people, it you didn't, didn't feel work. it. That no. happened to me. So the yeah. first time they gave me the amount, I felt the, the, the circle, I saw the circle come in okay. and I felt someone motioning towards me okay. and I got afraid. Okay. And I was like, no, I'm not going to go in. I don't want to okay. know what they have to say. I, okay. I just got a little afraid. Yeah. And then the two other times I did it that night, they gave me a little less okay. and I never accessed that point again okay. until the next day when I said, can you give me the same amount? Yeah. Because there were other people there. There was one girl there who's like, yeah, um, I have a I have a shaman who just sends me ayahuasca. So I do it in my bedroom. <laughs> like um, people are like, what are you doing tonight? She's like, well, actually <laughs> going to be sitting in my room doing Spirit ayahuasca. vision for eight hours. It's like, what about you? Yeah. So she didn't feel it because okay. she's her tolerance. And yeah. then I also heard if you smoke a lot of pot, you kind of have to stop for almost like two, three, two or yeah. three weeks. The girl next to me was like, she's she's a jealous uh, you know, ayahuasca can be jealous. She doesn't like weed, <laughs> you know? So like they're like competing or something. Yes. So that didn't funny. work at all. I yeah. think you would have just needed a higher dose. Well, it took me, so they offered a third pour for the people who had, like by the second pour, it was vomit, like a symphony of vomit, right? Everybody's retching, people are moaning. It's like full theatricality. Mm. And um, me, this, the girl next to me, and then some other person were just kind of like patiently waiting. And then, so they offered us a third, um, a third dose, and we took it. I, I vomited, but nothing, nothing. I was really? the only thing that was good is that I was like awake and present enough to see the assistant of the shaman really getting down uh, by the fire. It was so strange, like, like at like two in the morning, he's just started like boogie dancing like by the fire by himself, and that was very entertaining. But other than that, because he was doing it too, right? I don't, I don't think so. I think he was just like being there to helping, you know. Well, everyone was on it. Like even the shaman at oh, one really? point, he bumped me and I was like, or I bumped him and I was, cause I was dancing and I was like, I'm sorry. He's like, oh honey, I have no idea where I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I kind of like that everyone, yeah. but it really made me believe that there's other realms. If you yeah. can access it from a drug, I mean, maybe I, that's ignorant, but, but one girl, it, it, so we all talk about our, our experiences and this one girl was like, I was in Nazi Germany and there was a wall and I was helping that this woman had turned in some Jews and then felt bad about it and was coming to me to have her soul cleaned. And I always wanted to clean souls. And I'm just like, Who, what is happening? Like these people were getting like full on. They were acting out these like yeah, plays yeah, yeah. or whatever. Damn. Like mine was not like that. What was yours like? What kind of visions did you have? Mine was more annoying. <laughs> Mine was like a to-do list. Oh, my God. It no. was so annoying. It was like, sell your house. <laughs> and I'm just like, ugh, like, come on. Shop and, for different clothes. <laughs> yeah. But then at one Dye point, hair. <laughs> I, got, I got so many to-do things, like, you know, finish your will. And so that I was just kind of like, the last time I did it, I wanted a really big dose. And I was like, I asked the spirits. I was like, what am I past everything? Okay. Past my house, past yeah, my yeah. kids, past my career, yeah. past my husband, like past all, everything I imagine. And I got like very, very strong information. Okay. And that was something that really kind of lasted for a lot. Like at least I was high on that for like two weeks. Uh -huh. It's kind of come off a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah. But still it's like, and it, I feel like I, I really in, enjoyed getting that information. I think it's great. I mean- People, uh, it's the weirdest thing about it is that it was discovered by, you know, uh, uh, indigenous, indigenous populations in South America, mm -hmm. but it, I don't know how they did it because it's one compound from a plant and then another to make it digestible. So on its own, as it like, um, the, cause the psychoactive compound in ayahuasca is only like 
able to be ingested because it has like an MAOI inhibitor or something like that. But mm. you only get that from brewing it together for hours. Right. How the fuck did that? How the fuck did that happen? I, I'm so curious about that as well. I, I was just visiting in Santa Barbara and there's co this coastal sage habitat and they talk about all the indigenous people who lived there, the Chumash Indians, and they would just like, this berry is used for, you know, uh, astringent and right. this one is used for washing your hair yeah. and this one. And like they all have these different properties, but how did they, did they just trial and error every single plant? That's a like, lot of fucking trial and a lot of error. Well, they were there for like thousands of years. I know, but so. even with, I mean, even thousands of years with no like, how? Maybe they got visions. Maybe I, they. I, I think it was probably put there by ghosts, <laughs> you know, or like aliens or something. I don't know. That kind of shit makes me think, oh, maybe this, you know, maybe there is like some other. We're being met. Someone with. guiding yes, you to honestly, it. I mean, who knows? But it's, it's wild. Um, the 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 drug or the the compound in ayahuasca is called DMT. And then you can do that by itself. That does not seem fun. Everyone's like, yeah, it's like uh, for 20 seconds and you don't know where you are and you faint. Is that DMT? It's for, for like 20 minutes. and 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, um, and it's probably the most like uh, intense, the 5-MeO version of it. It's called 5-MeO DMT. It's probably the most um, powerful psychedelic drug you can do, but it only lasts 20 minutes. And why, what's the, why should I do this? Um, because it's sort of like, um, well, it's incredible. I mean, I don't want to endorse, you know, or promote illicit drug use, but you feel like you die. And, um, but there's no pain and there's um, not a party drug. Oh no. You're dead on the floor. You're, yeah. You need someone there to like catch you. Okay. You will fall over. And are you having a realization afterwards that stays with oh, you in a positive yeah. way? Absolutely. You can. Uh, other people I think get too scared by it because mm. in about 45 seconds, you completely um, lose the sense of your body and the sense of me versus anything out there. Mm. So like you, it feels like you dissolve into the ether. Wow. And there's no scary. more you. Yeah, it's super scary. And it's um thrilling. I wonder what would happen to someone like my husband who is sober, mm -hmm. who doesn't believe in other realms. Oh, he would love it. Because he did acid when he was like in sixth grade mm -hmm. where it's like you just see colors and you're like, yes. whoa, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's a kaleidoscope. <laughs> yeah. And then he like had to go to rehab by the time he was 14. <laughs> and so never got to revisit drugs right, in any right, meaningful yeah. way. He's like drinking strawberry 40s or whatever those like, what's like the strawberry alcohol you get from? Oh, uh, uh, Boone? uh, Boone's very, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Boone's strawberry, uh, Boone's farm or something like that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 he yeah, was yeah. just doing that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So he never got oh. to be like a sophisticated, right. which is what I want to tell my daughter almost like, Designer drugs, darling. <laughs> right, and wait. I didn't do drugs yeah. till I was like 30. And then That's now I smart. feel like I can do them, yes. you know, lightly. I my, know. You know, I, I don't, I didn't, you know, OD on stuff. Yeah. Or he, not that my husband OD'd, but. Did you grow up in the suburbs? No, I grew up in Rockford, Illinois, which is, Rockford, um, Illinois. it's outside of Ch Chicago, but it's not a suburb. It's the second okay. biggest city in Illinois. I just went back recently. My husband went there for the first time. We've been married eight years. And he goes, this place has major get me out of here vibes. <laughs> <laughs> the second we got there, he's at a Costco trying to get a computer cord. Oh and it was gosh. just like, Ooh. it's rough. I mean, yeah. it's not as bad as a suburb, as they say, better from the gutter than from suburbia. I mean, suburbia so true. feels really rough. It, I mean, it's rough in the strangest way, especially for white people, because like you get I grew up in this very safe Mm. Like we never locked our door. Really? No, nah, never locked our door, but we were like squarely middle to lower middle class. Like mm. I never had like a car or a computer or anything, but we could always, we never, ever, ever worried about physical safety or, or like nice. nothing. It is nice, but it's also boring. Mm. And there's nothing like, um, there's no like real world stressors to kind of like prepare you for a life of like pain and degradation you know there's just nothing going it's on just it, like panera bread yes it's panera bread and it's um dungan donuts and that's mm. about it um so because of that we did a lot of drugs oh, you know fuck you know but it's no you can't win because i'm always <laughs> like where can i raise my child no 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 yeah but it's i wish we hadn't because it's so much better to do them when you have when you know your brain is developed that is a big issue yeah too. especially with the weed i've recently learned um this like the, you know, especially now where the weed is so strong because this like California weed is like, it is not the 70s weed that people what were What were people smoking. doing in the 70s? They were just smoking in the morning because it was like a doobies. cigarette with like a tiny bit of something in it. It was just like, that was like, that little just a uh, spark in a doobie and like, and mm, I, that stuff I think is like, I mean. Did they drive while they were high? Yeah. And they didn't wear seatbelts or have like airbags. Right. 
It was just wild back then. It sounds so fun. I know. My dad hitchhiked all the time. Sunset Boulevard was just like you just would get in people's cars. Yeah. I mean, I hey. guess we do a version of that now with Lyft. Uber. I mean, <laughs> that, I was t- saying that the other day. It was like, so we just get into strangers' cars every day, multiple times a day now. For generations. That's fucking crazy. I know. It is pretty scary. Fuck, when I was doing drag back in Boston, um, getting the taxi home in drag from the nightclub was always a crash course in sexual assault because they would always something about cabbies at that place where they would come to pick up the girls and they would always try to like put our my hand on their dick or like <gasps> i mean all the time all the time oh my god yeah i was chased home by a fedex truck once oh like chased i had to run into my apartment it was so crazy that's horrifying yeah but i was really hot and drag i bet so. i'm sorry that happened to you thank you actually i haven't heard people talk about that you know because it's like so often I feel like all the victims are women. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of them just look like women too. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's like for, for drag queens, especially, I mean, for trans women, it's like, it is, it is rough, yeah. rough, rough, rough. Because I don't know, there's something about men who, when they fetishize what they consider to be a taboo, mm-hmm. they have this laser focus that's even creepier than their they normal get even, mode. They get even more horny. Yes. And also if they think that you have a penis, they kind of assume that you're, it's like, I feel like it's kind of like you're, you're um, one, one of, of the guys, but not so they can. I don't know. I, I don't really know how to figure that out, but it's it is fucking creepy. Like I would be at a bar, a drag bar, you know, like after the show, and a guy would come up to me two inches from my face, like, "Can I give you a blowjob?" Really? Yes. I'm like yes. <laughs> 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 and I miss that. <laughs> I miss it. I I bet. Um, what was it like backstage at a comedy club? Um, our guys, pre pre pandemic. Yeah. I mean, in the good old days. Did you see that girl just got like hit in the? I just feel yes, like was a bottle thrown at her. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just feels like it's getting more and more dangerous to like do. Let's just not work anymore. I, I say podcasting's just, nice. Podcasting's nice if you actually have a, some kind of point of view and maybe just like a modicum of uh, understanding of like any facts. Because if you notice, no, like you notice people will be like, so I stopped washing my daughter and I have to say, it's so much better. And then the post will be like, yeah, I'm never going to wash my kids again. Yeah. And the misinformation the can mis- really. Just because they have headphones and a microphone. I know. And it's I, fucking crazy. I also think that people are noticing that like, oh, there's no one talking to the right. And like, if we start talking to them, we could have like, our numbers will go through the roof. How else can we compete? So yeah. people kind of are vague. Yeah. They're not, right. yeah. you know, they're trying to like make sure that they can get as many. Yeah, those uh, vulnerable flyover country people. It sucks, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't really know what the future is um, in terms of that. Do you like traveling on the road, being on the road? I used to love traveling, you know, and that's the problem. One of the things I talk about in my book too is like coming to terms with, I use, I'm trying to get back to my pre-child Natasha who had so much joie de vivre and would like go, you know, river rafting without a helmet and like go to Africa on a spur. Like, okay, get vaccines put up and down my arms, go the next day. And now it's like I'm constantly like worried about choking and like, you know, there, everything is like a, a fear-based thing. Yeah. I mean, there there's definitely a freedom in not having kids. And it's like, oh, shit. I hate that I'm like not this person anymore who had so much because I was never a scared person I was just like really move to New York move to London you know go go to Thailand go to Australia and you know I just would never look back and it's just sad (laughs) in a way because I want to be that person again but I mean look at Madonna she's normal (laughs) (laughs) she's got like 12 kids she's like in her bathroom (laughs) at all times making a video (laughs) like a sex video with her trainer (laughs) like what are our kids are like ma like i'm sure she has her own bathroom but Uh, like (laughs) that would be funny if that was a shared bathroom bathroom in the mansion (laughs) 14 bedrooms one bathroom yeah that'd be so funny wait do you look at what madonna's doing and you think that that's funny or cool or normal i don't know i mean i look at it and i'm like is she is she okay? But I've never been a huge fan. So I've never been a huge fan either, but I've been gay my whole life. So I have been always course, aware. Right. And um, there were, there have been eras or, or um, you know, uh, lo- moments of her career where I've like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Like, I mean, I remember when music videos were on TV and they would premiere on TV and that was always a big thing because hers were fantastic. But I mean, I, I remember, was it Truth or Dare seeing that yeah. at the theaters? Oh, that's a fantastic documentary. It's good. But and it's I just remember, good. I remember her coming down the steps and her 
rollers and asking the assistant. This was before cell phones. And she's yeah. like, any messages? <laughs> and they're like, no. <laughs> and she's like, okay, I'm going to my room. <laughs> yeah. You know, just to peek yeah. into the lonely life of a... Of a, like a world famous diva. Exactly. And I mean, you know, arguing, uh, taking the piss out of Warren Beatty backstage. Oh, yeah. I, it's it was, so, yeah. It's that's like real a, Hollywood shit. That's a great movie. Yeah, it's um, awesome. So I, I am a fan, I guess, but I don't know what's... I just feel like we've... I don't know. The, the sex thing is like just a little boring to me, I right. suppose. I mean, it's it's on the one hand, you can like applaud her for being consistent and mm. not being like a sellout. But mm-hmm. on the other hand, she's wearing trainers and a grill and asking Jimmy Kimmel to eat her out. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like. <laughs> Remember she did stand up? No. She no, did. She did I it know. on a late night show. But why did she do that? She's just like, I can do it all. I think because when you're Madonna. And you just, I don't think you're surrounded by a lot of no people. Of course. That would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I actually do know someone who, I'm not going to, worked with her, let's say. Mm -hmm. And and he said that she's a a very, very difficult person to disagree with. I know why I I got off of her too. Hold on. (laughs) Bless you. Excuse me. That was was so elegant. That's how I vomit too. Uh, During the ayahuasca, Uh, I'm like... (laughs) 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 <laughs> I mean, meanwhile, it comes through my nose and I break blood vessels in my eyes. So, you know. No, but I read her brother's book. Oh, And he was right. like, Madonna's wedding. She put me in the smallest room of the castle up in the attic. And then he was her quick change person. Oh, Christopher for the wedding? Ciccone. No, for her, oh, her, oh, oh, the her shows oh, yeah. for a while. Okay, okay. And they would get into these huge fights and she would like degrade him in front of everyone. But it just sounded like, whoa. Yeah. A lot of whoa. Oh, yeah. I, she's always seemed like a person you would, you would not want to get within six feet of. Oh, and you the other I mean? funny thing Christopher said is he's like, she always says that she was dropped in Times Square with $2 in her pocket, <laughs> but my dad was paying for her apartment. <laughs> oh, that I love. I love that shit. Oh, I know, God. and who knows like yeah. how, and also it's like, was it really the smallest room in the castle? I mean, right. and it's, it's like, like- It's the castle. Right, yeah. like it's like very easy to be like, well, why, you know, why yeah. didn't I get this sweet? Yeah, I mean, I just think that she is probably at a level of, She's I'm talking about different realms. I mean, she's probably in a realm that I don't think any of us could probably understand. Right. Of you know? course. So let her just be in the dark yeah. in her bathroom with no eyebrows. Yeah, no eyebrows looking like on I a mean, Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> with her grill and her tits and her giant ass and like just talking about her pussy with a lisp. It's like so it's so wild. And also she put an ad on her Instagram the other day looking for a trainer. Did you see that? Oh my god! A funny idea. She like, must burn through these uh, <laughs> trainers like so quick, so so quick. She probably just wants to conduct interviews for two weeks, right? Like just <laughs> yeah. have men or like gay guys over who are like, I "I'll be your trainer." That's, that's true. Because <laughs> I think there was um like in the the eighties, I think she would famously like get in a limo and ride around New York City and just like pick guys get you know pick guys off the street and then fuck them in the car. Wow. And um, which is like you know that's really very that's modern. Fierce. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think she probably still does that. Mm. She has to go about it a little bit differently. I'd like to do that. I would too. I'd want to get to know them first, though. I don't want to just pick like hot guys. Yeah. I'd like to like. Hmm. I don't know how I would how how I would do it. Let me ask you this. So, I'm always so fascinated with straight people in this concept of like cheating and betrayal as the ultimate like sin. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, I know what you. What mean. is with that? Because there's nothing else. Because we've like I've got to be my daughter is like so important to me yeah so i have this family and that's that's what it is but, but I, i'm making that work right so the fan the fantasy i suppose would be that he dies <laughs> and then <laughs> i'm free <laughs> to Fuck some guy yeah, yeah. with a yacht probably is where I would go with that. <laughs> Who's like hot enough. And then I can have the lifestyle I always knew I could have. That you deserved. That I deserved. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you're, if, if Moshe like cheated on you with um, Blake Lively, let's say. Um, I wouldn't care who it was with. Okay. At this point. After okay. the pandemic, I'm like, go for it. Because I was <laughs> like, will fuck no you. hot nannies, <laughs> no way. And then now after the pandemic, I'm like, oh, let him be hot. Just come over. Give him something to look at. Madonna. Madonna can come over. Yeah. I don't know if he'd be into her. But, but would you would you feel like betrayed because it's always if like, he fucked Blake Lively uh, or any any woman? Yes, it yes. would be. I would be like, okay, now I get custody. Oh, oh, divorce. 
Like Rob? straight to divorce. Well, no, I don't. No, I guess I would be like, okay, now I get one. <laughs> yeah. Quid pro quo. Well, how does it work in a, like if, if you were in a relationship with a kid. I don't fuck kids. No, oh, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a kid, like. Yes, if I have a child and I'm in a relationship. Would you think you could still be in an open relationship with a kid? I mean, it's hard to go there if you don't. Oh, no. I mean, I think that, it, well, first of all, like it would be the, how do I. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I don't see why not. Because if you're in an re- open relationship, you're not having sex in front of people in general, usually. Right. So you just, like, as long as the, the child is not like watching, I don't see what's the problem. Maybe we'll, I mean, he's always trying to push that. Open relationship? Or at least a three-way. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that's so tired, though. <laughs> But that's worse because that's like inviting all of the like insecurities and like foibles and like um, missteps of uh, that's just and he too doesn't, clunky. And I he feel doesn't like. have it's such a good way to put it, clunky. And clunky. he doesn't have the wisdom to know that it can't be one of his friends because I because <laughs> I'm like no, that's like awkward. Then no, you forever. just hang out with your friends. Have- yeah. So he and then I was like, maybe like a sex worker would make more sense. Yes, yes that would make more sense. But at the same time, I feel like once we do that, mm-hmm. or he was trying to say like, when I go to Burning Man, can I have it be an open thing for Burning Man? Uh, and I'm like, I'm already thinking five Burning Mans, five road gigs. Okay, now when he if I let him do that at Burning Man, now when he's in Rale- in Raleigh next week. Yeah. Does he think that he can like do something there? I don't want to have these discussions all the time. So it's like, it's almost like it's just easier to just be like, we're not doing yes, that. I, I feel the exact same way. Is That's like part of the draw of being in a monogamous, monogamous relationship. The, the, we're done. Like, <laughs> we're like it's we're not looking anymore. We're not like um, searching and like, you know, making a mistake, whatever. I Burning Man? Yeah. You went there pregnant, didn't you? I went there three times. Um, it was it was not for me. And he wants Three to bring times. our daughter there. So I tried to do, she's five or four and a half. And I'm like, that's why I said to him, um, what if you, instead of bringing her, because he wanted to bring her this year, you can just do that thing where you you have free reign. And oh, I told wow. him that this year, kind of as a joke. And then my therapist kind of urged me to like get some clarification on it. Yeah. I was like, I just told him it. Let's see what he does. And then I told him, you know, right before we went, and it was it was actually very sweet. He was like, oh, well, you know, you're the most important thing to me. And I didn't really even think you were serious. Wow. And our family is so important. So that was very nice. So that he didn't nice. do it. But I still don't want him to take my kid there. It's the not abs- appropriate. It's not appropriate for anybody who is interested in hygiene or like no. feeling good. I mean, it sounds like a nightmare Safety, to me. Safety, there's dust storms. Yes. But there's drugs. But Tons he's, of drugs, yeah. He's like, well, then why do all these other people let their kids go? I'm like, well, they're probably bad parents. There you go. So November 15th, the book comes out, right? Yes. So I talk um, about a lot of this. You know, it's 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 a lot of like me trying to still maintain gla- like glamour. It's a comedy so book. Pretty. It's 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 a it's not a self help book. This is comedy essays. Yeah. Uh, the not world that is boring. Our um, what to expect when you're expecting bullshit. <laughs> no, <laughs> no but, but I mean so I like gorgeous. those books. You do? Well, I mean, it helped me as a mom, of but course, yeah. you know, I didn't but, know what to. I mean, there's so many books about and so many people out there like um arguing for or uh, competing for your attention in terms of how to like raise your child that oh must my be god fucking it's daunting it's so annoying and like there's all these like women on instagram and sometimes i'll like save the videos and show my husband so she'll be having a fit and i'm like okay let's do what this what the thing says you yeah. know and so we'll do the three steps and it doesn't work and i'm like these people are just scamming people i don't think anybody knows how to raise a there's child there's no generation where we're like yes it really worked to validate all of their yeah all of their uh you know fear and and because you're not supposed to say all these things to kids. Now you're not supposed to say good job. You're supposed to say you worked really hard on that. <laughs> and you're not supposed to say be careful, you know, because that could like get them afraid. And oh there's God. just all these new rules that are like exhausting. No oh, shit. Yeah. So I'm kind of making fun of a lot of that stuff too. That's great. Um, can I keep this? Of course it's for you. Oh, so thank you. I, I have one for you too. This is um, Tatum just, O'Neal. Yeah. Now, is it true that her, her dad let her do cocaine when she was 11? Well, she, I think she won an Oscar at eight, so. Okay. Yeah. But, like, people didn't know. Like, we drink Red Bull and, like. I don't. Th- <laughs> I mean, my mother was a nurse in, this, uh, in the uh, early 80s, and she smoked at the nurse's station. With really? the doctors. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't think we should be so hard on her dad. 
for like giving her cocaine. But maybe no, we, I, think I, I should read all the information. Yeah, there's a lot of I think cocaine was the least of the problems. And like Jack Nicholson would bring like 12 year olds over and everyone would be like, okay, well, we'll just leave now. Yeah, the golden age of Hollywood. <laughs> Before phones, you know, people just vibing. I don't know about Jack Nicholson. That's <laughs> they were vibing, right? Yeah, they, sure, they certainly were. Actually, Stevie Nicks lived across the or next door at one point. Stop it. Yeah, talking about cocaine. Yeah. I love her. She's amazing. Yeah. It, she doesn't still live there. We can't go over. Um, you should have her do the podcast. Be. Has she done it? I, I no, I don't think anybody's over there right now. It was <laughs> like some uh, somebody like parked in my uh, driveway, and um, it was. I, I asked the guy. I was like, "Oh, do you live next door?" He's like. Kinda. I was like, oh god, here we go. There's well, some weird shit going on. Stupid husband over there. of hers. What's his name? Um, um with the, with, with the woman's name. Um, uh, um, um, uh, Kelsey. No. Um, uh, but not Leslie. Le it's not Leslie. It's um, Shelley. No, it's not. Shelley. <laughs> it's not Veronica. Julia. Just <laughs> no. It's um. Uh, well, anyway. What is it? It's you. No, just it, it, he's it, so famous. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> it's so famous. It's like uh, Terry or. No, just look up it's, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, yeah. It's um, no, it's not Leslie, but it's very I know, close. It's, I know. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's, anyway, mm. he has his new family. Like, she looks exactly, exactly oh, like God. Stevie, like when she was, you know, 27. That's so weird. And I, then I really didn't like him anymore because he had a um, heart-shaped, uh, or no, he had a guitar-shaped swimming pool. Oh, <laughs> Lindsay. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay Buckingham. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, well, I won't. I don't want to keep you too long. This is so sorry, Lindsay. This is like such a great. This is lovely. This picture. Thank you. That's yeah. my child. And um, and yes, it's it's you know parenting at the end of the world. The, the pandemic was rough, but yeah, no um, I tried to maintain some glamour. I hope that it's hilarious. And yeah. you know, I was trying like it's like more like David Sedaris style okay. comedy essays. You don't sure, have sure, to sure. like read yeah. it from the beginning to the end. But you know, there are no um, pictures though, huh? I'm sorry. I, you yeah. know, the picture thing, it was like, it took so much more energy and uh, I could barely write the book. No, You've got to like hunt down high res. Did you do that? It sucks. Writing sucks. It's so it's hard. It's so hard. It is so hard. Me and Trixie wrote together and it was like, I, my assistant had to have like a Glock to, uh, pointed at the back of my head to get me to, you know, to write anything. And I don't know how to type well. I go like this. <laughs> It's so embarrassing. <laughs> you so, should have just texted it. I, I know. Like I did a lot of it on my phone. Ooh, but um, yeah, it's terrible. It's but. very it's very rough. But did I'm you have a nice editor? I did. Yeah. And I'm so glad it's over. And I'm never writing another one. <laughs> That's and it, Have you noticed words. how thin it is? It's <laughs> That's. <clears throat> when we got our this first one, I was like, like mine, I was like, a pamphlet. Great. A pamphlet. Now, Sharon. Sharon's is a little heavier. She kind of yeah, really went for it. But that's a heavier cardstock. Uh, and, um, oh, my God. I didn't the, realize that. You could do look that. Look, there's only th uh, 30 words on each page. Oh, my God. This is big font. Hello. See, I should have done Large that. Large print. Yeah. I, I would also encourage people to do the audio book because, you know, we're yeah. comedians. Do, so. do you read it yourself? I read it myself, of course. Although that would have been funny to have someone else Glenn read Close. <laughs> Or like <laughs> Kathleen Turner. That you would have been amazing. That. Yeah. I would like, yeah. Stevie, hello. maybe Stevie would do it. Oh my God. That would be, yeah. I would love to have an old, old, like Russian woman who's been smoking for what, 50 years and can't speak <laughs> English very well. That would be great. Wait, I don't think someone's done that. That's really funny. Yeah. I Something love it. to think about. I like, mean, especially if you're a voice person, you know, you've got a podcast, you're a professional, but yeah. you still have someone else do it. Outsource it. Right. So give someone else a chance, you know? <laughs> Give Glenn Close a yeah, chance. Yeah, yeah, she's so <laughs> bored. Uh, well, Natasha, thank you so much. Um, I, we never have guests, but I'm oh so excited God. because you're, I actually legitimately love you and I was so nervous to have you over here. Oh, well, thank you yeah. so much. This Thanks has been a dream me. and I love you too. Great. Um, where can they find you on the whatever? Um, just go on my Instagram, although I, I just can't deal with TikTok. I'm sorry. I have a page, but I'm just like, my time too, is I, too precious. I feel exactly the same way. And um, so on my Instagram. Oh, so you have a child. I have a child, yes. They're going to have a TikTok and you have to monitor that. No, I'm putting her in like a school that doesn't do technology. Oh, she's going to be like a Luddite or an Amish person? Oh my God. I shouldn't do that. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. I mean, I, no, 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 no. I feel uh, bad, but like, I just don't want her to go. Like, especially for girls. It's so terrible. They have to learn calligraphy. They have to learn yeah, sewing. She's like, um, but no po TV. polished wooden toys. She's hammering them. <laughs> Block. Yeah. Like uh, squares and circles. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you, when you say no technology, do they have electricity? No, they do. It's no. just it's just something I'm like toying with. I think that's a great idea because I was recently asked like um, if I would ever let my child have like social media at what age I'd be like, 
That's why I don't think I could have a child. 27. Yeah, 30. I know. Yeah, it's really it's, it's really sad because like all these kids are getting depressed. I mean, I know someone whose daughter, they had to hire like someone to eat all her meals with her because she's anorexic now in high school from Instagram wow. and they're monitoring the food now and it's like it's just everyone's comp- and then it's just so who knows where it's going to be in 10 years. Yeah. I mean, well, hopefully, I mean, you you and I both grew up without having to curate an online persona as we developed. I know. That's stressful. That's too much. And AI has been out, you know, since yesterday and they're already trying to figure out how to like do porn fakes with everybody. So it's like we're it's going to be so trashed in 10 years. We're just going to be a bunch of like um, like brainless gutter people fucking robots. No, there's going to be a huge split and we're just going to be like the Amish Luddites. Okay, yeah. Cool people too. Okay, I'll be there. Farming, farming yeah. doing our thing, uh, using map or uh, like a map to get somewhere. I guess <laughs> drawing maps and then using <laughs> what's that thing? The Thomas Guide and like a you know uh, like the, an almanac. Or yeah, an almanac. Uh-huh. Uh, and then there'll be the people who just want to go there in their little pods, right? And sure. slurp their goo, their goo, and fuck their robots. And, and yeah. yeah, so yeah, maybe there'll be a middle ground that we can hang out in. I don't know. But I, yeah, I think you're right about I that. I mean, with Elon Musk, like taking over Twitter. I was Twitter, just going to say that, yeah. It's he's going to trash the world. Robot fucking in like three, two, one. Absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll be there for it. And you know what? There needs to be something to make fun of. So. True. And yeah. also making fun of robots. I feel like that's a that's a world where maybe we could do that. And I, it's like guilt free. Yeah. You don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. It's like making fun of houses or something. <laughs> Which is my next thing. Yeah. Are you, are you going to do another? Um, do you have a, is it a Netflix special? Is Comedy Central I have special? A Netflix, I have a Comedy Central special. You and Moshe have one together. We have one together work? on Netflix. Netflix, okay. Yes. That's the one I want. It's called The Endless Honeymoon Stand-Up Special. But the uh, podcast is The Endless Honeymoon Podcast. And that is, you know, you can just see it all on my Instagram. Okay. Fabulous. And I'll try to read Tatum's book. Oh, you don't have to. I'm, I've been I've been like actually very interested in her because of that story it's, that my hairdresser told me. It's that, it's crazy. It's yeah. wild. I think last thing. I don't think any child should be in a movie, ever. Me neither. Never. Eighteen or over. I, I have a friend who is twenty five and she was a child actor in Disney stuff. And I just talked to her yesterday and she came over and she was talking about how she's ready to have kids and she wants to settle down. And she, she missed her last two years of high school. She, you know, and yeah. I think that it's like she already experienced that life almost. Yeah. And it's like maybe it would have been better for her to have like, I don't know. I mean, she's she's amazing and successful, yeah. so it's fine. But I just can't imagine being 25 ready to settle down. Oh, I can. I bet. <laughs> I was like, at 32, I was ready to retire. Really? <laughs> yes. I was so ambitious. Really? The kid really got rid of my ambition. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. I know. Ambition is annoying. It's so overplayed. I and mean, Trixie just... is so ambitious. That's mm. why she's dead. You know, she worked too much. <laughs> but good partner. Great. Well, They're now a good that, yeah. engine. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, she literally keeps me tethered to this realm because otherwise mm. I would just drift away. That's awesome. Sure. And you guys yeah. have such an amazing, you're so funny together. Yeah, I weird. love listening to your podcast. Oh, thank you. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, we have a lot to say as, <laughs> as gay, bald, white men. Wait, can I ask you something? Yeah. What? Oh, I don't want to get the it wrong. Capital of Romania. No, oh. no, no. Was it? Because um, it's like not top or bottom. What's side? Oh, side. So like top or bottom is like. I know what that is. Yeah. What, what is it? What is it? What is it when someone's a side? Well, like there's guys who want to be fucked. That's if you fuck that you're a top. Right. If you're want to get fucked, you're a bottom. But if you want to just eschew anal altogether, you're a side. Oh, you're never doing anal. Well, not. I mean, say yeah. Say that's not your preference because think about it. I don't want to do anal. Th- Hello. I, if you're a woman, part. I mean, why would you want to do anal? Because you want to please the guy so bad, and his dick seems small. Boom. That's usually when yeah, I yeah, will. Yeah. I have You're considered like, oh, it yeah. in the past. I won't feel that. Go ahead. But it yeah. fucking hurts. No shit. And there's no <laughs> prostate. So what's the fucking point? Okay. So side is like a, a, a shoeing. Yeah. Because anal. Then, like it's, I mean, there's a risk of shitting on the dick. Mm. Unless, you know, you're prepared, which takes time, mm-hmm. planning. There's no spontaneous anal sex. Not everyone has nail scrubbers in their bathroom either, you know. Well, I'm just saying it's like you got to stick your fingers up. <laughs> no, it's like, no fingers. No fingers. No fingers either? I say no fingers because I don't trust anybody's fingernail situation. I know. I have somebody who has a perf. Oh, I know somebody who had a perforated colon from that. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <gasps> 
See, I scheduled my C-section. It was scheduled for 10 o'clock, 10.07. I had great pictures. I yeah. had the baby. Yeah. I was out of there. <laughs> I'm not trying to like no, do that. To rip out the plumbing down there is horrible. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. So, it's like, oh, so there's I, so much more you can do besides penetrative anal sex. There's okay. so much more. I love that. Go on walks. You can go get ice cream. You know, like there's <laughs> lots of other stuff you can do. So. I would definitely be a side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so but much. Yes, for I love your podcast. I'm, thank you. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, my book comes out November 15th. Yes. Um, it's beautiful. I haven't read it because she would not send me an advanced copy. But um, it's. Uh, I can't wait to read it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.